guys, are you looking to get a perfect score in the ACT math section? If so, welcome. In this video, I'm gonna share five actionable items that you can do in order to improve your score. My name is Brooke. I've scored perfectly on the ACT math section as a teenager, then I scored perfectly overall on the ACT as an adult, and I've helped many students score perfectly on the ACT math section as well. So I'm gonna talk in this video about some of the protocols that I go by when I coach my students to try to get their scores up. Now, I'm not gonna be able to fit everything into this video, so the rest of it, I put in these two books. This is the best ACT math books ever, Numbers, Stats, Trig, and Geometry, book two and book one. Algebra, go check them out on Amazon. They are the books that I dreamed of for many years as a tutor that never existed. So check those out. We also have an online course for the ACT, the best ACT prep course ever. It includes over 100 hours of ACT prep material on all sections of the exam. For the math section, we include digital copies of all the information that we have in our books. And I walk you through every chapter as if I'm your private tutor walking through the chapter with you and like doing every example problem that is in the book. So go check that out. Cool, so let's get into my tips for getting a perfect score. Number one, the first tip that I have is nerd out in math. Whatever geeky math thing is at your high school, join it. It's one thing to get every question right. It's another thing to become a math ninja where you are able to basically slay any problem that comes your way in eight different ways because you are so math proficient. If you have the opportunity to take AMC 10 or AMC 12, do it. If you can go to the Amy, invitational math exam, go do that. If there are other math competitions, math Olympiad, mathletics, whatever nerdy math club exists at your school, go join it. Because the more nerdy math and crazy hard math you do, the easier the ACT is going to feel. And that's gonna help you on your way to getting a perfect ACT math score. Tip number two, gear up your calculator to save precious minutes. When it comes to getting a perfect math score on the ACT, it's not all about what do you know how to do. A lot of it too is how quickly can you move so that if you get thrown a curveball, you have time to deal with it. If you have a TA-84, that's my favorite calculator, you can put programs on it. Now, there are only certain programs you can put on it. They can't be overly long or overly complicated and they have to be single function and all this stuff as explained by ACT. We get into a lot of that in our blog post on ACT calculator stuff. Also in that blog post, we also may have some freebies for you guys, a math calculator downloads. If you are looking for calculator downloads, we will also put that in the blog post. We have designed like basically a set of programs that we think adhere to ACT's rules. They find the slope, they do the quadratic equation. So that kind of stuff that is root and simple and you probably already know how to do if you're gonna get a 36 in this test, but you use the programs because they save you like precious little seconds. Number three, don't neglect the need for speed. So a lot of times I see people trying to get a perfect score or whatever, trying to really up their score on the ACT math section, and they completely neglect the fact that they need to do this thing in a set amount of time. Speeding up often is about going over things that you think you already know, but finding a better way to do them. There are different ways to do this. One way to do it is to take a diagnostic test. And what I like to do sometimes with my students is have them use like the lap function on their phone when they're timing to figure out how long they're spending on each question and then identify the questions that are taking them longer than like 30 seconds and then see if there's ways that they can strategically reduce that time. If you guys are getting questions right but you know they're taking a long time, then you need to seek other information on how to do those. You wanna make sure that you're approaching questions from a variety of different angles and that you have multiple strategies for every type of question. One, because you never know when your strategy won't work on a particular question because of particular parameters. And two, because the more different ways you know how to do things, the more optimization you can work into your process, right? In terms of doing things the fastest way you can. But bottom line is, listen to other voices. Just because you get something right doesn't mean that you're doing it the best way. So optimization is part of getting a perfect score, not just getting things right. So make sure you're optimizing. Number four, Drill down any content you need to work on. Now this is probably obvious, but whenever you want to improve on the ACT, especially if you're scoring anything below a 33, you want to make sure that you have the content down. Now most of the time, if you're really close to a 36, like if you're getting a 34, you don't need to work on content. But I realize that all you guys out there, some of you like want a perfect score, but you might be at like a 25 or a 28 or a 29 or something like that. And the 36 isn't going to just materialize. If you're scoring under say like a 33, you need to work on content. And how do you work on content? Well. First step is take a diagnostic test, go through it, figure out what kinds of questions you're missing and make a list for yourself, that's your study list. And then you need to cover all of those areas. You can do it with our math books, you could do it with another math book. However you do it, you need to then work through that content. That means you need to go over, if you're missing an exponents problem, you need to go over all your exponents rules, you need to review all of those. And you drill it down 
just like you would in math class, right? In math class, you do all the exponent problems in one day. What I don't recommend doing is just incessantly doing practice test after practice test after practice test with no drill down in between if you're scoring below, say, a 32 or a 33. If you're scoring above that, then you might be able to get away with just practice tests at this point because there's probably only a few things that you need to work out. But unless that's the case, you probably have some content to work on and it's best to drill it down. I like to think of the ACT as like a final exam for like every math class you have in high school except calculus. So in that sense, it's kind of a doozy. It's a lot to study for. And oftentimes you need to brush up on content or even learn new content. The new ACT incorporates to my estimates about 10 questions per test that are probability statistics related. That includes averages, probability, arrangements, counting, all those kind of questions. You've got to learn that stuff and a lot of you never even had that class. So you could be in total trouble and maybe it's things that you never learned before. Maybe you've never even learned what the word permutation means. And if that's the case, you need to learn it and you need to find some source that's going to teach it to you. Finally, my last tip is to practice the hard ones. So I know it's really helpful to do complete practice tests, and it is. It's really important that you get your pacing down. It's good to feel that exhaustion, especially if you can sit down and do the whole thing at once and then also do the science test. And if you're ever doing full tests, remember we have an online proctor that you can use to time your whole test. So check that out if you're doing full practice tests. But if you're just really trying to get your math score perfect, you're really, really far up. There is a time for doing practice tests and there's also a time for just doing the hard ones. The last 10 questions or so, 12 questions or so are always the hardest on the ACT. So track them down and pay them a visit. There are a lot of practice ACTs in PDF form floating out there on the internet. I'm not necessarily gonna tell you exactly where they all are, but if you get on the internet, you're probably gonna find a giant huge repository of them somewhere. Usually they have form codes, things like 72F or 72C or things like that. I also recommend for math in particular, practice with more recent tests if you can. That means 2014 onward because the older tests don't include that probability and statistics material that's going to be on your newer tests. If you're getting close to that 36 or close to perfect, just start doing the hard ones. Because if you can do the hard ones, everything else is going to be easy. There you go. If you're aiming for a perfect score in the ACT math section, I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because we have lots more awesome content to help you totally for free because we think everybody deserves resources to do better and to be more awesome and to get into college. So subscribe, support us, comment below this video, tell us if it helped you, tell us what you're scoring, tell us what you wanna score. I'll see you guys next time. Watch some more videos.